Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and this is going to be a book haul from a library sale, uh, thriftbooks.com, and a charity shop. So the first set are from The Ark. Um, I will link them below because it's quite interesting the stuff they do. And they have books for uh, between, I think, a dollar and two dollars. Um, so hardbacks would be two dollars and paperbacks for a dollar. So the first is a Newbery Honor book, um, which is generally, I think, for middle grade. Uh, and I like middle grade fantasy, which this would appear to be. It's called The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper. And I'm hoping that it is the first in the series of the same name. Uh, so I can actually read it without having to find the other books. Yeah, it is about an 11 year old with what looks like the chosen one trope. Then I think these next two are by the same author. Yes, Sarah Douglas. We have Pilgrim and Sinner. And this one uh, has a lady with wings on it. I like warrior people with wings. Um, she's also got dual swords. And there's like a castle -y thing in the background. And this one also has a lady with a sword. And some people riding Pegasi in the background. So, also really weird looking. This thing, what is that? Weird creature. I got these because of the covers. They are unfortunately book four and five of a series. Um called The Wayfarer Redemption. So I'm gonna have to find the first book. But they just, while I really like modern covers, I also have a thing for these weird, are they 90s covers? Yeah, 1997. That tend to be really good at actually describing what's in the book. Like there will probably actually be a character who looks like this and who looks like this and probably actually be a castle. Um, and a mysterious hooded figure in the background. Um, there'll probably actually be those things in the book. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons I like 90s covers. Um, and also they just kind of look cool. And it is always also nice to find a completed older series so that you can like read it all at once. The last one I got from the ARC uh, was Eloquent Rage by Brittany Cooper, which I have already read via audiobook. Um, but it is the sort of thing that you might want to highlight and reread. And generally, I just remember really enjoying it. So it is something that I would like to add to my library. The subtitle is A Black Feminist Discovers Her Superpower. So that's that's kind of what, what that's about. I discovered thriftbooks.com, which I've heard of before. But um, I've like searched up individual books that I might want, which is what I do with like other bargain sites like um, Better Book Books. And so uh, like Tally Hibbert's work, the rest of Helen Huang's series, that kind of thing. And those were like normal prices. Um, but after I got discouraged, I left the site and then I went back and decided to give it another go and just search the deals. So like their special section is $3 per book. And there's like 51 pages of 30 books each page. So I just went through the whole thing and found seven books that I really, really wanted. I found like 12 that I would kind of like and would want to try, but $21 was more around my budget. Um, so I ended up buying seven. So the first one was Beyond the Gender Binary by Alec Vade Menon. This is a pocket change collective book, which I think is a penguin thing. Yeah. Um, so it's itty bitty, but I've been trying to add more trans and non-binary books to my repertoire. I think this will be a nice little book to have. And if I don't feel like keeping it, this would be a very um, good book for my local free little library to have. Um, it's a little bit damaged, which I don't think any of the other books I got from thrift books are. It's got this little tear at the top, but um, yeah, everything else was in perfect condition. And it's understandable that this would be the torn one because it has a, a carver uh, paper cover. 
Then I got a few that I have already read, such as, I love to hit myself in the glasses with books when I hold them up. Uh, Ellen Outside the Lines by A.G. Sass. This has both autistic and queer up in it. it. Is by an autistic queer author. And I thought it was really good when I read it. So, and I also think that I forgot this existed and didn't include it in my most recent autistic books video. So, I'll have to go in my third one. It also has a nice pretty pastel blue spine. So I think it'll go right in this shelf. This rainbow of um fair amount of queerness shelf oh and the main character is jewish too i don't know if the author is but that's a thing dauntless i don't remember where i heard of this it's by uh elisa a bonin and i don't remember much about it except that this cover was very familiar so i was sure that i had heard about it and wanted to read it but that my uh library didn't have it Oh, speaking of which, I left one of the books for this haul out in the living room because I wanted to read it right away. I think both of these people on the cover have bow and arrows, which I like. It looks like they hunt magical creatures. This is another one where the cover made an impression on me. I remembered it and I remembered that my library didn't have it. Uh, when Life Gives You Mangoes by Corrine Getton. And it looks like it's about a girl who uh, remembers pretty much everything about her life except what happened one summer. Then this one I don't think I had heard of, but I think the title sold me. It's called Other Ever Afters New Queer Fairy Tales by Melanie Gilman. I like fairy tales <laughs> and I like queer versions of things. Also very pretty cover and a nice pale yellow spine. And this is the other one that I had already read, Slay, um, and just wanted to add to my library. Um, I really like video games. Um, and this is about a black, young black teenager who uh, makes an, a massive multiplayer online game um, just for black people. And it's about people finding out about that and like being nasty about how it's reverse racism and blah 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 and um how important about how important it is to have space safe spaces and about video games being cool the other one that i got that's in the other room is a strange and something endurance this book i have heard and the author very nicely puts in trigger warnings that say that there is on page um depictions of rape in this book is usually an absolute no for me. Um, I prefer to be off page uh, if um, the author wants to talk about that kind of thing. It's even more important to me to know that that's going to happen going in. Being surprised by it is very bad. With knowing that ahead of time I can probably figure out when it's going to happen and skip that part. But um, the reason I want to read it is it is a fantasy romance with the arranged marriage trope, I'm pretty sure. Um, and a lot of the romance revolves around healing from trauma, all of which are very much my things. So I'm going to try it carefully and see. This is another one that I really wanted to read. But, but my library didn't have it and I didn't want to pay full price for it, especially when I wasn't sure if um, the content was going to be too much for me. Uh, from the library, I have much lower standards for picking things from a library sale because the paperbacks are 25 cents um, and the hardbacks are a dollar. So I got The Thief and the Beanstalk by, by P.W. Cantonese. Um, and it says, this is not Jack's Beanstalk, and it's a middle grade. I have not actually read very many Jack and the Beanstalk retellings um, or expansions. I just know the basic story, and I've seen, like, movies and shows depicting it. So that should be interesting. Then I got another one that I've already read, The Key to Rondo by Emily Rada. I love Emily Rada. Most of this shelf... Um, is by Emily Rada, um, but Emily Rada is quite prolific, um, 
and has written several other series besides Del Toro, which is what this one is, including the Rondo series, which has an evil queen and, ooh, hello. I forgot how creepy those people looked. Um, Uncanny Valley warning, uh, a la cats. Yeah, that's, don't like that. Um, there is a cat person in this book. I don't imagine them looking quite like that. And the evil queen might be holding this dog hostage. I'm, I don't remember. I read it a really long time ago and I'm kind of excited to reread and like rediscover it because I do remember enjoying it. It's a portal fantasy kind of where these kids get sucked into the world of a music box. Like there's paintings on the side of a music box and it's like a real world that you can go into. But yeah, she has blue lipstick. I like blue lipstick. Tracks by Louise Erdrich. I was looking for anything by Louise Erdrich or Beverly Jenkins because um, they're both uh, relatively prolific. Beverly Jenkins more so because romance author. But yeah, I have read like three things by Louise Erdrich. Two of the Birch 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 Bark Birch Bark series and one um, like the Night Watchmen. Um, and I thought they were all really good, so I'm wanting to read more Louise Erdrich. Oh, <laughs> then I picked up the Pacific Northwest uh, Travel Guide. I thought this was a Rick Steves one, but it, now I'm looking at it, I don't think it is. It was right next to a bunch of Rick Steves one that looked just like it, um, but apparently not. <sighs> Basically, I live in the Pacific Northwest and I would like to do more road trips. Um, and so I'd like to know if there's anything interesting uh, nearby that like I haven't seen because um, I have only been to a few places in my home state. So this might help me plot out a couple road trips. Then another middle grade, Sword of Waters, which is book two um, in the Shield, Sword, and Crown series, which looks like might have something to do with like a card deck, like tarot, but different. Ah, then I am currently reading, <laughs> currently working my way through very gradually. Um, haven't read one for quite a while. The, the Amelia Peabody series by Elizabeth Peters. This is quite a ways in, but I kind of want to collect them so that they're easier for me to actually pick up and read because um, <laughs> I've had a big pause, but I really enjoyed the first two books that I have read so far. Actually, I might have read three books, the first two and then one farther in this series. I just kind of skipped ahead because that one was available. I really like the character of Amelia Peabody. Um, it's a bit colonizer-y because this is uh, set when the British had like, were coming out of colonizing Egypt. So they were, and they were like continuing to appropriate cultural artifacts so our main characters are English archaeologists and there's some stuff about how the Egyptians aren't taking care of their artifacts so we better you know yoink them over to England to an English museum instead of a Egyptian one um so that's a bit icky um but mostly they're mysteries and mushy characters being adorable. One of my favorite lines ever is from the first book in this series, um, and it's about um, women friendships and um, wouldn't it be great to be old cat ladies together and not have to even worry about getting married? Yes, it would. <laughs> Another Julie E. Cerneda who wrote A Turn of Light, which is one of my favorite books. I've got another sci-fi of Julie Cernadas that I've yet to read because uh, I think it's the second in a series and this one might be as well but I am yeah it's number three. I am gradually collecting <laughs> Julie Cernadas um, because I expect to really like them and I've gotten all of them so far from library sale so they're cheap. She can write a super slow plot but I won't care because I'm enjoying myself so much. Ah, China, Land of Dragons and Emperors. This is a nonfiction by Adeline Yen Ma. Does anybody recognize this font? 
of the titles. I'm fairly certain that's the font they use for the Avatar, The Last Airbender titles. I learned almost nothing about any non-European, uh, non-US history in school because I go to school in America. Um, and granted, I was homeschooled um, with the Christian curriculum, which wasn't as bad as it could have been. Because, um, for example, uh, Rachel reads, of Reads with Rachel had a significantly worse time of learning history than I did. From what I've heard, it's pretty common in, Eng in American schools to not learn the history of, say, South America or Africa or Asia because it's all so Eurocentric and North America after it's colonized. Interestingly enough, I just read Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor, which has a lot of history of China in it. Um, it's a bit info dumpy, uh, <laughs> but um, the author Jiren J. Zhao's YouTube videos have a lot of stuff about Chinese history because they are Chinese. Um, they're a first generation immigrant, I think, to the US, not Canada. So I have been learning but I think this would be really helpful. Although I haven't read my History of Japan book that's over here yet, I need to read that too. But uh, this I think is a little bit more accessibly written and has like pictures. Um, I think that the Japan book is a bit more academic. This is more for beginners. Yeah, I'm excited to be less ignorant. Okay. Doesn't this cover look cool? Four all new stories of romance, fantasy, and natural enchantment. It's called Elemental Magic by four authors. Um, and I like fantasy romance. Oh, another Louise Erdrich. I don't know anything about it. Looks like it's a really weird one that has child death in it and is like very psychological based. Okay, last one. And it is The Sum of Our Days by Isabel Allende. It's a memoir. Um, and I have heard really good things about Isabel Allende. Looks like it's a lot about motherhood and loss. Also religion, addiction, spirituality. So those are the books I've hauled. Look forward to videos about building new bookshelves. Maybe in September? It's gonna be a while. I left these over there looking a mess because I forgot to talk about them at the beginning of the video. These are can cozies for like pop cans or any kind of can. Energy drink cans. Other kinds of cans. Um, and they're in pride colors. So we have rainbow, ace, aromantic, non-binary, trans, bi, um, and Soon I'm going to make a pan one. That's how I've been entertaining myself in the evening while I watch TV. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to leave an emoji, how about a globe? Because Ellen travels from the U.S. to Spain in this book. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!